Hey guys, I want to do a video about why low airflow causes low superheat. We've touched on this at other times, but I figured it was a subject that needed to be talked about. I see a lot of it in some of our posts and some of other people's videos, and I'm not sure if it's getting communicated properly why that one causes the other. Low airflow, if you have low airflow in a system because for whatever reason, the ductwork's not the proper size. Uh, the blower's bad. The blower capacitor's bad. You have a dirty coil, dirty filter. For whatever reason, your airflow is below what should be there. It will cause lower than target superheat if the system is charged properly. I mean, if you have a system where the target superheat is 15 and under good airflow, the proper amount of airflow you have, the target of 15. If you then go into a low airflow situation, you see that superheat drop. Why does it drop? The less air moves across the evaporator coil, the less evaporation will take place. The evaporator coil is designed so a certain amount of air will move across it. The solid column of liquid that comes to the metering device will hit the metering device, the pressure will drop, will induce evaporation. The heat will be sucked up by the refrigeration that the air is depositing as it crosses the coil. Now if there's not enough air crossing the coil, that won't occur and then your superheat will not climb as high because superheat refers to superheated refrigerant that passes from liquid to gas and acquires heat beyond the saturation point. What does that mean? Refrigerant turns from liquid to gas and gas to liquid at a saturation point. And the saturation point changes depending on how much pressure you put on it. That's how we can manipulate the refrigerant to do what we want because we have it under a certain pressure. And once it hits that saturation point in the evaporator and climbs above the saturation point, it starts to evaporate and acquire more heat. Each degree of heat that it acquires is another degree of superheat. So if you don't have enough air going across the coil to allow that process to occur, you won't acquire the superheat, meaning you have low superheat. Also, you will have a low suction pressure, because typical suction pressure is a certain amount at a certain temperature. If you have low airflow, it's the same as telling the coil that it is a cold temperature inside. It's just basically fooling the measurement. Low airflow makes it seem like you have an extreme cold temperature. So I hope that cleared it up a little bit on why low airflow causes low superheat. Stay tuned for more fun HVAC.